Exciting times are ahead. The mystery surrounding B-13's condition, which we discussed earlier, has finally been unveiled. It turns out to be a deliberate move by SpaceX. But what exactly happened, and why did they make this decision? Next, after a series of setbacks, NASA has made significant progress with the SLS Artemis II mission. Meanwhile, Rocket Lab has just completed another successful launch, adding to its impressive record this year. Let's dive into all these updates in today's episode of Great SpaceX. In the previous episode, I shared an update about B-13 after its landing. In the released image, only the aft section of B-13 was seen floating in the Gulf of Mexico. To provide you with more details, my team sought additional insights, and fortunately, everyday astronaut Ryan Hansen Space and Lab Padre shared invaluable data, footage, and images captured after B-13's landing. These materials not included in SpaceX's official updates or stream help clarify the situation. I want to take a moment to thank these teams for their excellent work, which allows us all to better understand the events surrounding this flight. Please make sure to follow their accounts on X and subscribe to their YouTube channels to support their continued contributions. Thanks to the footage provided by Everyday Astronaut, we can confirm that B-13 exploded shortly after hitting the sea. The explosion burned the upper section of the booster, leaving only the aft portion intact. This corroborates my earlier prediction that B-13's destruction was not caused by the flight termination system. Instead, it was the intense collision with the water surface that damaged the fuel tank, causing the explosion. Following this, only the aft section of B-13 remained afloat, as seen in the previously mentioned image. But what happened next? Eyewitness accounts revealed that this section floated for some time before eventually sinking. The reason for its sinking has now been clarified. Observing Everyday Astronauts' livestream at around T plus 1 hour 22 minutes, a boat was visible near the floating aft section of B-13. After the fire on this part appeared to subside, there was a sudden and intense flare-up. Upon closer inspection, a small light dot was observed in the liquid oxygen tank area. This suggests that the boat used a gun system to fire bullets at the remains of B-13, causing it to reignite and aiding in its eventual sinking. Reports estimate the fired bullets were about 20 millimeters in size. Ryan Hansen Space even shared a comparison image on X showing the impact marks, providing compelling visual evidence. However, it seems that the boat's efforts alone were insufficient to sink the aft section. Additional reports suggest that aircraft were deployed to finish the job. Flight Data 24 tracked the flight path of an aircraft, N503XX, circling the booster landing area. This aircraft, equipped with a 30mm cannon, was likely used to target the remains of B-13. Footage from Lab Padre also showed the presence of multiple aircraft in the area supporting these claims. Why would SpaceX go to such lengths? In my view, SpaceX decided to sink the entire prototype because recovering B-13 intact was not feasible. Allowing the booster to remain exposed could have posed risks such as revealing internal structural details to competitors or other organizations. Additionally, immediate recovery of floating parts might have been unsafe, given the volatile nature of this situation. Sinking the remains for later recovery was likely deemed the safest and most practical option. As for using external vehicles to target B-13, this may have been a backup plan necessitated by damage to the booster's communication system during the explosion. If the FTS system lost functionality, manual intervention would have been the only alternative. Looking ahead, I believe SpaceX will eventually recover B-13, similar to its efforts with B-11. Based on the images, the floating section includes the liquid oxygen tank and engine system. If SpaceX can retrieve these components intact, the outcome could surpass the recovery of B-11. The data gathered from such a recovery would be invaluable for refining Starship's design and performance, ensuring continued progress toward future milestones. If you're as excited about the potential recovery of B-13 as I am, comment below with Let's Recover It! And while you're at it, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more updates. I've noticed that about 80% of our viewers haven't subscribed yet, so please click that subscribe button to support our channel and ensure you receive the latest SpaceX news as soon as it drops. Your support means the world to us, so thank you very much. As SpaceX continues its journey toward revolutionizing space exploration, every flight 
Every test and every recovery effort adds to the growing legacy of innovation and progress. The lessons from B-13 will undoubtedly contribute to the future success of Starship and SpaceX as a whole. Stay tuned for more updates and let's look forward to the exciting developments ahead. Next, we turn to an update on NASA's progress with Artemis II hardware, a key milestone for the agency's ambitious lunar exploration goals. With the next Artemis mission only months away and under significant scrutiny, NASA has finally initiated the rocket assembly process, marking a significant step forward. Currently, the NASA-funded Space Launch System rocket has begun its stacking process at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Work is now focused on assembling the solid rocket boosters, crucial components for the mission's success. In a recent statement, NASA wrote, Engineers and technicians inside the Vehicle Assembly Building at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida stacked the first segment of the Artemis II SLS rocket boosters onto the Mobile Launcher 1. They added, the first components of the Artemis II moon rocket to be stacked, the solid rocket boosters, will help support the remaining rocket segments for SLS and the Orion spacecraft during final assembly. Accompanying images reveal progress updates from NASA showcasing technicians using an overhead crane inside the 525-foot-tall facility to lift the left aft assembly onto the mobile launcher. Next, the right aft assembly will be installed, carefully positioned on the 380-foot-tall structure used to assemble and launch the SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft. These two boosters are essential for lifting the 98-meter-tall SLS rocket, along with the four Artemis II astronauts, to orbit for their journey around the moon. According to NASA, at launch, the 177-foot-tall or 54-meter twin solid rocket boosters provide more than 75% of the total SLS thrust during liftoff from NASA Kennedy's Launch Pad 39B. Each solid rocket booster consists of five segments, meaning the two boosters comprise ten segments in total. Manufactured by Northrop Grumman in Utah, these components were delivered by train last September. Before stacking, these segments underwent processing and inspection at the Rotation, Processing, and Search facility at Kennedy Space Center before being transferred to the VAB. This progress represents a significant achievement for NASA, which has faced criticism over delays, cost overruns, and technical challenges in recent years. However, preparing for next year's mission remains a formidable task. NASA must accelerate assembly to complete the SLS prototype, while also addressing ongoing issues such as the Orion spacecraft's heat shield. Despite having identified the root cause, the details of the heat shield issue have yet to be disclosed, adding to the mounting challenges. In addition to these technical hurdles, numerous tests and preparations lie ahead, all of which must be completed to ensure the Artemis II mission stays on schedule. Success is critical not only for Artemis II, but also for the broader Artemis program's goals of establishing a sustainable human presence on the moon. While the progress is promising, it remains to be seen how NASA will navigate these challenges and deliver on its promises after years of setbacks. Let's see how NASA will respond to the public's high expectations and build confidence in its lunar ambitions. Stay tuned as we continue to follow their progress. Now let's dive into the latest update on Rocket Lab's new Electron mission. On November 24th at 10.55 p.m. Eastern, Rocket Lab launched an Electron rocket carrying five satellites for the French company Canis into orbit. These satellites, part of the Internet of Things constellation, are designed to enhance global connectivity and location tracking. This mission, aptly named Ice Ice Baby, represents another significant step forward for Rocket Lab and Canis. The five IOT satellites were successfully deployed to an altitude of 643 kilometers, completing the mission approximately 66 minutes after liftoff. With this achievement, Rocket Lab has now deployed a total of 203 satellites into orbit, crossing the impressive 200-satellite milestone, a moment of pride for the company. This mission marked Rocket Lab's third electron flight for Kinesis, contributing to the planned 25-satellite IOT constellation in low Earth orbit. The earlier missions in support of this constellation occurred in June and September, which were Electron's 50th and 53rd missions, respectively. Kinesis described the significance of this constellation on their website. Kinesis' IOT constellation will provide precise connectivity and location tracking of any object anywhere on the planet. 
Whether you're on the open sea, in remote areas, or under extreme weather conditions, Kines ensures reliable, continuous data transmission so you can benefit from accurate information available at all times. The Ice Ice Baby mission is also noteworthy for being Electron's 13th orbital mission in 2024 and the rocket's 55th mission overall. It was one of two orbital launches Rocket Lab conducted within 24 hours, with the other mission taking place at Wallops Island. This marks the first time Rocket Lab has achieved two missions in a single day, a feat previously accomplished only by SpaceX. Rocket Lab's progress stands in stark contrast to industry giants like Blue Origin and ULA. Blue Origin remains stuck in the suborbital realm as its New Glenn rocket faces ongoing delays. Meanwhile, ULA's Vulcan rocket, despite two missions this year, continues to encounter technical issues, leading to further setbacks. In comparison, Rocket Lab's consistent success showcases their growing reputation as a true competitor to SpaceX. With one more mission scheduled for 2024, Rocket Lab is set to build on this year's record, having already surpassed last year's milestone of 10 flights. Looking ahead, Rocket Lab's future appears promising, especially with their upcoming Neutron rocket. Scheduled for its first launch early next year, Neutron is poised to add another dynamic player to the competitive space industry, offering strong competition in the ever-evolving space race. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.